Hello everyone, this is FPV Angel and One Conscience. Today we're going to read through various scriptures and show you how we relate things to the workings of the realm. We look at the cherubims in more detail and how important it is for you to understand what they are and how their various roles in the underworld relate to the workings of the realm. Now I had the advantage of seeing the construct before I had even read any scriptures. My Nazca line work is showing me layers in the underworld which relates to the workings of our luminaries. The anti kefirian mechanism also becomes more layers in the underworld with its cogs, gears and mechanisms, as you have seen in, as you have seen in one of our previous videos. I have never read through scriptures before, but now that I do, I can see exactly what it is translating into. So what one conscience is going to do here is read through various scriptures and pause in places for us to discuss and break down what they are telling us. We chose these parts in scripture as we feel they are the most important ones that will help you see how the construct operates and how the technology plays a very big part in this. So the microphone over to you one. Thank you. So the very first uh, script that always catches everybody's mind is in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Well, that right there disproves us coming from apes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> 100% <The> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that one's a huge one. <laughs> so what does the Bible say about cherubim? Well, Genesis, it says, Then the Lord God said, Behold, man has come, has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the God, God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword which turned in every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. Right, so what we're going to do there is we're going to pause there people and discuss what that's just been telling us. Now when I listen to that, that tells me this is over in at the east gate and this is the scene that you're going to come across um, probably in relation to uh, the preparation of a sunrise uh, now the cherubim it's something that's there on guard or it's do, it's there for a purpose it's been created for a purpose and it will always be there doing this wall uh, over to you on for what you can take out of that um, yeah I, I think the same thing the cherubim um, the cherubim is, is energy I mean the flaming sword is energy I would say it's not going to let us get there and if we did get there I mean we probably wouldn't make it back the sun is very hot and it's on launch mode from there so yeah I would say in relation to uh, what the Mayans believed as well you know that the underworld to them was a test uh, probably of the manor they had these rooms that they had to go in and there was dangers in there they had, to, they had to conquer to get past it and prove themselves I guess is what they were trying to do or perhaps this is how they you know this is how they wandered around in the underworld trying to make their own sense of what they were looking at but when you look at the main um, the main's beliefs you start to see a lot more a lot more to it than just a few rooms with cogs and gears and dangerous things moving around so it tells you that cultures of old are, have also experienced what this, what the Bible and the other scriptures are telling you. It tells you that a lot of the world knew of the workings of the realm. They knew it existed and they knew some of the workings and they tried to map it it seems. So we can take that from that first uh, verse as well. Yeah. Over to you one. Um, so we'll move to Ezekiel. And these are in no order, just so everyone knows. Um, so Ezekiel, as I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continuously, 
and in the midst of the fire, as it were gleaming metal, and from the midst of it came the likeness of our four creatures, and this was their appearance. I didn't continue on on that one because. Yeah, we haven't, <coughs> we haven't got one to reference that yet. Have we a model? Right. I'm I'm trying to do something like that now. Actually, hold on. I'll just show you this image. We'll cut in there. So. Okay. Uh, I'll screen share this image. That's what I was trying to do in the background uh, the last couple of days. I'm wondering how I can go about creating what they're trying to describe. Uh, where's it up there? Can you see it? This one? Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a depiction of a cherubim right there with one of its one of its halos, its accelerator, and there's the human wing, the human arms built into the wings. Amazing, isn't it? So this it also be, reminds me of Jesus on the cross. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, with his arms, yeah. Yeah, and the, you know, you can take your Celtic cross from that. You know, you can start to see. A, a, a lot yeah. of the scriptures, various scriptures and belief systems are, are telling you. But you know, the, when I look at belief systems now, it tells me the whole world. You know, not just this image, this one, all these others, these seven here, these seven here, these depictions here, Sumerian, the Egyptians look the same, very the same, much the same depictions. It's all telling you about the same story, isn't it? And that actually looks like the Templar cross as well, in a way. Yeah. I'll leave that on screen then while you <laughs> no one. Okay. <laughs> no one. <I'll> <laughs> <laughs> well you can continue. Alright, so Ezekiel. Um, then I looked and behold, four wheels beside the cherubim. One wheel beside each cherubim, and the appearance of the wheels was like the gleam of tarnished stone. As for their appearance, all four of them had the same likeness, as if one wheel were within another wheel. When they moved, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went, but they followed in the direction which they faced without turning as they went. Their whole body, their backs, their hands, their wings, and the wheels were full of eyes all around. The wheels belonging to all four of them the wheels were called in my hearing, the whirling wheels. And each one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherubim. The second face was the face of a man. The third face was that of a lion, and the fourth was that of an eagle. Then the cherubim rose up. They are the living beings that I saw by the river of Chebar. Don't know if I pronounced it right. Now, when the cherubim moved, the wheels would go beside them. Also, the cherubim lifted up their wings to rise from the ground. The wheels would not turn from beside them. What a fantastic description, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. But we can see why people get so confused. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you go through that one first. Um... Well, <laughs> do you want to do you want to screen share? Have you, have you got the text on screen there? Oh you yeah. Can screen share it if you want, because it'll help me as well to it'll help break okay. it down even more. Because the more you read, the, the you know what's what we've gone past, you start forgetting. <laughs> so yeah, if you can go back to the start of that, that um, where you started on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Very good idea. Okay. There we go, and this is where we read. <laughs> Right over to you, want to so. Well, I mean, it's describing the mechanism of the cherubims. Um, your descriptions, of course, are going to be <laughs> better than mine. <laughs> I am um, finding it hard to articulate all of this. But they're basically telling us how the cherubims move around in the underworld, and they're carrying with them um, their little their little vials, the, you know, that are going to make these illuminaries. Yeah, certainly is, isn't it? And yeah. I looked and behold, <laughs> four wheels beside the cherubim, one wheel beside each cherubim, and the appearance of the wheels that gleam, gleam of a tarnished stone. So what the wheels are 
people is uh, what I've been saying the particle accelerators the, um, the technology that's used to project what we see and call luminaries this is what the NASCA lines have been teaching me and uh, kudos to Roger at um, Woodfossil University this guy's a scientist in his own right this guy's on the verge of actually discovering how these work through his own research which is amazing to, to watch and listen to and unsubscribing fantastic work but, uh, the, but what, what I've seen at uh, NASCA you know this technology exists it's how how these projections work what we're seeing in the heavens and that's what these wheels we said the cherubims are telling me these wheels are these projectors and there is various models of them now when the you notice when it mentions the wings lifting up this is this is an action that's going to lift the the put the wheels up and they will interlock creating the what we see in reporting the sky as halos or people are now calling sun dogs we call them halos this is the projection you are seeing from below because when it lifts its wings up the the vertical halo which is you would see around the face of the sun for instance and the horizontal halo which comes up into an interlocking position with it and this is what's electromagnetically trapping and harnessing the element that's being projected this is what we are seeing in the heavens now that would be my best guess description of, of how this technology works um, what else we got there do you want to cover some more bits of it one um well or, or the, the wheel yeah the the the, the movement yeah very important yeah because um what ptolemy described in the, in his world model in the, in the model of the heavens with these epicycles the guy was absolutely correct 100 percent because it, it, what he tried to take into account was what's creating these motions now it makes me wonder did this guy ptolemy know of the existence of these accelerators and how the world worked in those days because looking through all these cultures everyone knew it doesn't matter which culture you look at you know the Hindus or the Mandalas they're all depicting the workings of this realm and it makes me wonder you know did these people realize and plot and this is how they worked it out this is how Ptolemy got his model the model for the heavens because you look at um, Copernic Copernicus, you know, they they destroyed Ptolemy's works and all these epicycles, uh, they just fantasy talk, they get in the way, it's too messy. It, it's a lot of things that aren't taken into account to get to make something work, but I think they're wrong. <laughs> well, I know they're wrong. Because uh, what he's describing as epicycles are these projections in the sky we're calling halos. So, you know, you've got to look at epicycles. Epicycles, there's stationary halos up there and there's moving ones up there. Now, the sun and the other six major luminaries that are get being projected these are, have got these kind of motions they are moving around in the underworld and as described here they will go in the direction it's facing and they will not they will not alter unless the vehicle i.e. the cherubim is changes its direction then the luminary in the sky reacts accordingly and will go in that, that new direction so it tells you the cherubims in the underworld are moving around uh, across track work, mechanisms, triggers, you name it, various pieces of technology from what I can see and triggering different things to happen in the heavens, you know, di direction changes and this is happening to all the luminaries, all the major ones. Um, yeah. Is that enough for that bit? <laughs> um, I mean other than that it's just on a time system, it clearly says they don't turn they go in the direction that they're they're facing, right? So I mean, it's a it's a timed system. They have their paths, and that's all they can follow. Yeah, whatever that season they're in, you know, it's going to change across the seasons. These paths are exactly. obviously changing across the seasons, and that's why we're seeing you know the sun will go north or it'll go south, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's related to how it's what's going on down below. How's above, so below. What you're seeing in the sky is happening down below. That's exactly what it's relating to. Exactly. <laughs> I can't <laughs> agree more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Psalms. Um, I just liked it. The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. 
He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. I just thought that one was kind of cool sounding. <laughs> Where's that one? I can't see it. <laughs> it's Psalm 99.1. Oh, yeah. The Lord reigns let the people tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let the people tremble. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, Lord reigns let the people tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. Yeah, it's going to quake when this technology starts, people. You're going to exactly. want consciences work then, you know, she's been tracking them, this is technology switching off, off and on. Is it a quasi and quakes? Um, <coughs> Samuel, he rode on a cherubim and flew. He was seen on the wings of the wind. He rode on a cherub and flew. Now if you go back to our, one of our older videos where we showed Mauro Biglino, He's a translator for the Vatican, and his translation told him, in his own words, the cherubims are robots, the angels are robots. This is in the man's own words, you can go and watch his video, and that ties in perfectly with, with what we're trying to present to you people. We're looking at technology guys, you know, these are machines, and I'm not sure if they're AI, There's, you know, it's the production line down there by the sound of it and lots of works going on now yes. in some scripture uh, someone rode on the back of a cherubim now as as Moro said it wasn't fly he said although they say it was flying it was not in the sky but very important this he wasn't flying in the sky he was going across the ground on a vehicle because in Moro's own words he rode on it like a, on the back of a horse, so he was travelling along a metal vehicle on the back of it. This is what it's, it's telling you. He rode a cherub and flew. He wasn't flying in the sky, he was riding on the back of a vehicle, or what we would class as a vehicle but, or a machine that he was on the back of. He was seen on the wings of wind. Yes, the accelerators are going to generate a lot of wind. We now go back to some of our older research of that, where tornadoes, Typhoons, tempests, can all be related to this technology and how it works. Over to you, one. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. When Moses went into the tent of a meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from above the mercy seat um, that was on the Ark of the Testimony from between the two cher cherubims and it spoke to him so to understand that it, it says somewhere and I can't recall where that to uh, understand the angels you have to understand their language well to me their language is vibrations and tones it's, it's sound it's frequencies Another thing I can see in there is the, the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord. He heard the voice speaking to him from above the mercy seat. Now the mercy seat can now relate to the, the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the mm -hmm. Testimony it's, it mentions here, which is going to be coming up in one of our next presentations. Uh, so I'll keep that little bit for the next presentation because I'm going to elaborate on that a bit more and how they work. Okay. It's in Numbers 789. Um, so Exodus, there I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on the Ark of the Testimony, I will speak with you about all that I will give you in commandment for the people of Israel. Yeah, it's again, it's relating to the, the Ark and from between the two cherubim is where there's going to be an arcing of electricity mm -hmm. and I will speak with you about all that will give you in commandment for the people of Israel so it's um, showing you basically how to generate power electricity and this is for all the people of Israel now if you remember again one of our previous videos on this research Israel can be the name of the realm all people, all kindreds, all nations, and all and all tongues. That exact that covered our world exactly. That is not a country. That is the world. It's describing the the, the name of the world as Israel. 
Would you agree that one? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, and when they start reading this and they go through and they were to actually read more scriptures, you know, people on their own, um, it, you know, they'll see that it is describing that our world is Israel. Yeah, that's what. That's you know, what I believe it mean. even refers to the heavens as Jerusalem at one point in some of these scriptures. Yeah, that caught my eye so, on this as well. <laughs> yeah, so they've just covered this up. They've called countries the name of our realm. They're not letting us know where we live. Yeah, it's obfuscating the scriptures more, isn't it? Right, and because if you if don't you know consider, that... If you consider Israel as the name of the realm, then what scripture's telling you becomes a whole different meaning. Exactly, and the people, that's what I was about to say, if you don't know that that's what they've done, we're all assuming that this is just a little country and these people are, are God's favorite people and, you know, and there's going to be people that lie and say they're them and, and if you read it it's very confusing if you don't understand that this is speaking about all of us our world yeah so yeah we're it makes all, a big we're difference all the, we're all the creator's children mm -hmm. in the realm called Israel that's what it's telling me yep um, Ezekiel uh, really enjoys talking about these four faces so everyone had four faces. The first face was that of a cherubim, the second was a human, the third was that of a lion, and the fourth an eagle. Yeah, I think they could re re refer to cardinal directions in the underworld. You know, it could be four points in the underworld where the cherubim would need to be going on its journey. Could be wrong, but you know, I'm, I'm considering what's going on down below when I look at this. Them four faces might represent four locations, or it could even represent, you know, the four poles, north, south, east and west, the four gates, the four poles, the four portals. There's a bit more no, transparency there, but yes, <laughs> definitely very interesting, you know, this was made with four faces for a reason. And, you know, you, yes. again, you're looking at a piece of manufactured metal work with different faces. What is it telling you people? It's telling you this vehicle has got four different faces on it. If you go through other scriptures you'll see it's been laden in gold. You know the wings have been laden in gold. This is a magnificent piece of technology and mechanical work that's carrying these um, particle accelerators around, these projectors. Yeah, I agree with the, it's the four directions, it has to be, I'm sure that if we looked back further, we would find relation to these um, descriptions with the directions, you know, north, east, south, and west, lots of um, old religions use the directions, it's very, very important which direction you're using or calling or going to as far as the outcome that you're trying to, to receive, so... It's definitely important. <laughs> um, Isaiah. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't really looked at the seraphim. So, uh, it tells me that the this, is another, this is another model of um, cherubim. You know, these have got six for a reason. And two with two he flew. Well, the, we can see that two are used for, the, for accelerators, so it's got an accelerator on board at least. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, the seraphim are the fiery ones. They're called fiery serpents. Yeah, uh, Whether I, or wish not. They'd, uh, I wish they'd described them a bit more, <laughs> you know, what right. was lying around about them, them, them kind of descriptions. Yeah, um, when I first read them, I, I really took them as, as to do with the lava, and it still could, but I'm not real sure anymore, so <laughs> they don't give a very good description of them. <laughs> Yeah, they call them the fiery ones, the fiery the serpents. Impulse. But you never know, you know, yeah. you might find a, a depiction of one somewhere in some sacred geometry and it'll be a bit more revealing. You know, hopefully these images this exist in 
in geometry uh, or hieroglyphs, geoglyphs, you know, they could be out there still. Just need to be found and decode what, what its purpose or role is. That's a nice looking one. <laughs> Um, Ezekiel, you were an anointed guardian cherub. I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. In the midst of the stones of fire you walked. So that right there is saying that God placed the cherubim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God he placed it under. Yeah. Probably guarding away to something, you know, it doesn't really say right there, but it's I'm sure it goes on. It's important if it's a guardian, isn't it? Yeah. We're on the holy mountain of God, yes. in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. The stones of fire, you know, we're, we're now looking at volcanic type material here. Or possibly um, another subject we'll be going through in the next presentation. So I'll leave yeah. that bit for now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here's a bit more about the seraphim, Isaiah. In the year that King um, Uzziah <laughs> died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robes filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, two covered the face, two covered the feet, and two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. An amazing description. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a driver problem yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, on the train of his robe filled the temple. We even stood the seraph in. Back to the six, eight, six wings type. One again, <coughs> so we could just face. Well, what they call the Lord of Hosts, you know, you know, what's, which is the Lord of the Host in the heavens? It's got to be the which Son, is? isn't it? It's got to be the Lord of Hosts. Surely the Son. It's the most prominent thing that we see. Might yeah, be definitely. It could be the Moon. So, <laughs> you know, whichever one you would consider the Lord of Hosts, that needs a little more research on my behalf. Looking at what they call the Lord of Hosts. Oh, it is full of his glory. Yeah, I would say that's probably the sun. You know, the, the glory of the sun shining upon the world. The foundations for the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Uh, this smoke, I think it's, um, you know, go back to how they start in the east again, when the accelerator starts up. Because I've seen a few descriptions where the, this room is filled with cloud. And we've seen how clouds seem to form around these halos that we see in the heavens you know what the what people are calling sun dogs we'll go back to them again the halos they've got that cloud like color and i think it does seem to draw cloud or vapor water vapor in and possibly even produce cloud from it you know i think that's how it, how it works with the clouds clouds may be directly related to the to the halos hmm. Uh, where else we at? Who is me? I'm lost. I'm man of unclean twelve. The only bit I can look at there is the um well my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of the hosts. That's telling me someone's heard other than what they were told, they've gone down and seen it with their own eyes and now they believe what they're seeing to be true. It seems this person who was given this description was lied to, hence the mention of unclean lips, he was told lies. And he dwells in the midst of people of unclean lips, so he's living around people that are lying how the world works. Well, my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. He's seen the sun. He's been there and seen it himself and tried to describe it. So he knows there's people telling lies about what's going on in the underworld. That's what I'm looking at there. 
we can understand that. Yeah, yeah. All of us. <laughs> oh yeah, unclean lips. Politicians <laughs> got the unclean lips. Exactly. Yeah. Get the um. trout out quick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Chronicles says, For the altar of incense made of refined gold and its weight, also his plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings and cover the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Your computer is at risk. <laughs> uh, it's not, though. It's a bunch of spyware crap, I think. That's a nice description, there, isn't it? The altar of incense is made of yes. refined gold too. So there's a bit of gold refining going on there. <coughs> Again, we can go back to the accelerators and how they can produce uh, materials from elements. Looking at uh, elements to a matter, the, the way it works, the alchemy of this technology, which is very much part of creation. Yes. All these mountains of gold, silver, copper that are mentioned in scriptures, various scriptures, this is what it's referring to, this is where it's coming from, this technology produces it. The plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim, that spread the wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord, so yeah, pure gold, and they're going to make this golden chariot of the cherubim. Amazing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing <laughs> reading? It wow. is. They're, they're building stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're yeah, building they're it. They're refining gold. They're, they're going to make it from pure gold. Yeah. They're manufacturing in this uh, Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Um, Revelation. On, on a human scale, that one. <laughs> right. On a human yeah. scale and creator size scale we're looking at here is uh, a very big difference in size scale going on. <laughs> And this really could have been more like giant size, actually not us size. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the human size um, productions would be like the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. ones that they could carry around, mobile, which you know I'm going right. to cover in the next presentation a bit more. That's a mobile yes. version of something. Covered. Portable, mobile. So we'll save that <laughs> a little bit. We won't get too much into that. We'll save that one, but yeah. it'll it'll get revealed. Um, revelations and before the throne, there was as it were a sea of glass like crystal, and around the throne, on each side of the throne, were the four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature was the lion, the second was an ox, the third living creature was a man, and the fourth was an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Totally that, isn't it? Yeah, they're talking about the... Around the throne. Yeah, each side of the throne. I would say this is um, probably describing somewhere at the East Gate again, you know, where the sun's going to be project, start coming from and projected where these four living creatures are again. The same description of the four appearances. So it's like the same description from someone else of the same thing that someone's seeing, isn't it? The cherubim with the four faces. Well, there's two different descriptions, and this is where it gets a little confusing. And, and I'm not real sure if this is the second oh, one, but there's two different ones. These ones, oh, yeah, just noticed that they've got six wings. Exactly. These are the <laughs> seraphim. So there's two different sets of fours that they're describing. The first four we just talked about. This is the second yeah. set of four that are the seraphim. But they're still similar to the other ones, but they they have different functions. Their frequencies have to be different. I think that's the the different wings, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just like you talked about with the um, Nazca lines, they use different, you know, um, glyphs to describe different frequencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be and that's what this is. Yeah. yeah. Probably a different role. So same kind of technologies. Different role. Different parts to the, to the technology. And with the seraphim, he's holding two over his eyes, two at his feet, and he's flying with two, 
I mean, to me, that in a way could be that he is using them to move along, but he might be projecting out energy as well as taking it in from somewhere. It could be in uh, a flow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that well, make sense? Yeah, the last, the last part. You know, I was just looking at the last part there. And, you know, day and night they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy. You know, this yeah. is this is telling you it's running 24-7. And it's doing mm -hmm. it's doing its job, uh, and it's you know holy holy holy. Obviously, it works. It's the creator was happy with it because it hasn't been scrapped. This one, <laughs> and we'll get into the <laughs> we'll get into the scrap models later on, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to break. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's not going to be happy with you if you don't do that job right. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, yep. So that one's functioning perfectly. <laughs> you can tell these moments, can't you? Yes. <laughs> um. So Jude, and the angels who did not stay within their own positions of authority, but left their proper dwellings, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Wow. And that's why I, I say you don't want to break. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to break. I was just going to say, wow, what did I just say? Naughty. You've been yeah. naughty. Yeah. <laughs> so this, <laughs> what it's on here is this, this angel, this cherubim, didn't stay within their own position of authority, so something went wrong and it left their proper dwelling place and started causing issues somewhere else by the sound of it. Kept in eternal chains into gloomy darkness, so it's been put back into storage until the judgment of the great day. The judgment <laughs> day being it's probably going to be melted down and remanufactured or made into something else. <laughs> but yeah, that one clearly had a malfunction and the creator wasn't happy. <laughs> Which yeah. is uh, the more the more we go through this, the more you're going to see how that really relates to what's actually going on. It's true. Um, Hebrews, above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things, we cannot speak in detail. Ooh, you can't uh, let people know how it works. No, definitely not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you're not looking in there. You can't touch that. And we'll keep that for right. another, we'll keep that for another presentation. <laughs> yeah. Yep, nothing to see. Move along. <laughs> That's definitely for the next presentation because <laughs> we can go into more detail. Yes, we can, and you will. Just not today. <laughs> yeah, coming soon. Um, Matthew, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Wow. So that yeah. In heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Yeah. So. They're yeah, looking up. They're looking up. That's projections in the sky, basically. That's exactly. <laughs> in heaven their angels yes. see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Yeah. Every one of them has got a, a parent that you don't see in the sky. You know, the projection in the sky is the parent of the one below, basically. I think you could uh, translate that to decode. You know, th there's a, a relationship there. You've got the physical model in the underworld and the projection in the heavens. There's a physical relationship between the two, and perhaps this is how they worded it, you know, the Father who is in heaven. The projection yeah. which is in the sky. You know, something to consider there. I'm not saying that's 100%, but looking at that, yeah, I can see the relationship there. How and looking at various scriptures and, and other things, I can see how they they fit wives and children in. And when you look at what's on the centre of our grid, you can relate that to the 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 dots in various places on the grid, and like the primary eighth that we'll call them, or the the eight lotus leaves with the deity in the centre. You know, they're on our grid. I'll, I'll overlay them anyway, so people will see what I'm relating to. But yeah, I'll carry on. <laughs> Alright, um, <clears throat> Jude says, um, But when the archangel Michael contended with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pr pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, the Lord rebukes you. Blackie was in it this morning. 
Yeah, he was. He's sitting right in it. I didn't even see him. <laughs> yeah. Matthew says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. Yeah, the Jude 19 one, I'm not getting that very well. I'll have to go back to that. Uh, the Archangel Michael, I'm pretty much sure now, they relate to one of the primary years. Well, there's only four Archangels, and they are the chief angels. Yeah, they must be ones uh, um, that haven't got the line connected to them, and various ones of them. Which may yes. just be like chiefs over the other three. Well, it could be the four directions as well. Maybe the directions, the four angels guarding the directions are the chief over. Because it's like, nope, you can't come this way. Get back. Get back. It's like a little goalie. <laughs> <laughs> a blasphemous judgment mentioned there. <laughs> so that means something went wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, or they yeah, were trying so to keep it from going wrong, but yeah. if you go wrong, you're well, tied down. You're not yeah, coming you. back. Yeah, that's like saying, no, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I look at the angels like they're trying to keep it all contained. You know what I mean? And if it goes out of whack, then, well, they are the, you know. You know, they are the controllers, <laughs> as uh, Mauro Biglini puts it. Controllers, yes. the, the ones managing the place, basically. If they're not working right, something's, you know, someone's not going to be happy again. <laughs> Watch yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yep, they're supervising the whole system, these archangels. That's why they're the chiefs, I think. Um, and then Matthew says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. Not real sure about that one either. Well, they're, they're machines, so they can't get married. Really, that's what tells me. For the resurrection, they're going to get. You know, every one of the, every lumini gets resurrected. Re, well, resurrected at some point. Well, and that's true. Yeah. They don't. They want married because they're not humans. They haven't got that kind of relationship going on. Nor can they be given in yeah. marriage. But are like angels in heaven. You know, they've got a purpose, and the purpose is looking after this world and making it run right and. They're not gonna, you know. They don't come into the, the human factor of marriages and relationships. They've got their own functioning relationship that they have to adhere to. Um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel has a lot to say too, but we'll just touch on him here. Um, these were the living creatures that I saw underneath the God of Israel by. The Chebar Canal, Chebar, <laughs> and I knew that they were the cherubim. Yeah, nice description again. Underneath the God of Israel, so below the sun of the, our our world, basically, I would say that could be re relating to what they call God. Yes. I'm not saying God's the sun. I'm saying the Creator created all this. You know, underneath the God of Israel by the Chebar Canal, I knew they were cherubim, <coughs> living creatures. Yeah, living creatures in the underworld that they knew were cherubim. So that's uh, someone confirming that these, they called them creatures. Um, obviously we can relate to them better as possibly like robots depending, you know, have they got AI or are they just like things on set paths? There's a bit more to look into there. Yeah. yeah, again, it's, you know, you're looking at what they are. He's describing as living, you know, perhaps because they move around. He may be classed as living creatures and didn't know what to call them, but he knew they were called cherubims. Yes. I don't think the word robot or that kind of technology even existed in those days. You know, never mind them trying to decode what the, how they actually work and function. You've got to look at their description of what they're looking at and try and work out, you know. See the, see the relationship between that and a piece of technology, basically. Yeah. Um, Kings. Kings talks a lot about the Ark of the Covenant. Um, in the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim of olive wood, olive wood each ten cubits high. <coughs> um, 
um, this cubit thing really kind of messes with my mind. It says that it's the size of about a forearm. My issue with it, yeah, my issue with it is that things were much larger back then. All life was much larger. So. Well, we have to go on the we're on a creator size scale, don't we? You know. Exactly. We can we 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 can you we can scale that actually. You know, if we made a three D model and we used a, a human's forearm as a reference then in the model you can scale that to any giant size arm you want just by increasing its scale and it'll scale it up and up and up until you get the size you actually want it to present so it's always going to be that kind of representation you've just got to apply it to the the uh, giant the creator or whoever whoever's arm is creating this technology which puts it much bigger than what we thought well, yeah, yeah, very big <laughs> very very big not human size that's for sure they might be able to no. reverse engineer them and make small ones now, but no, not this type. Right, no. Colossians, uh, for, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Wow. That's our halos right there. Yeah. All things are created <laughs> in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. You've got the visible technology in the underworld and the invisible projection in the heavens of, of the halos that we've been describing, the sun dogs, the halos, are the thrones or dominions yeah. of rulers or authorities. All things are created through him and for him. Yeah. Perfect description. These thrones, dominions, you know, the rulers and authorities. This is the technology having various different roles in the in the heavens exactly what it's telling you perfect <laughs> um, Daniel Daniel says a lot <laughs> Good on <you>. Daniel sa <laughs> <laughs> he says here the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstood me 21 days but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. 21 days. Yeah, that's a strange one. Prince of the kingdom of Persia, 21 days. Michael, one of the chief, well that's telling me, Michael, one of the chief princes, which is <coughs> going to be, um, one of the technologies came to help me when I was left there with the kings of Persia. So it seems like a timed event. It was it stopped in a location for 21 days, and then this other piece of technology kicked in and helped it on its way. I don't know if that's something gone wrong, or is this something that actually happens in the heavenly calendar of kinds? You know, there's something going on there that I can't fully understand yet. I can't either, and, and maybe Jimbo eventually could answer this question. 21 days, I don't know why, and I don't have any information that tells me this is true, but for some reason I keep thinking about the moon. Like yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. it's definitely relating to a luminary, but which one? Yeah, there's 21 days, something <coughs> happens somewhere it seems, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then something kicks, something starts up and helps along its way. Yeah. yeah, something that people that understand the astronomy, you know, that's one for them really, is there something up there that seems to stand still for three weeks, 21 days, and then it's suddenly moved somewhere else? That right. might actually answer one of our planetary motions, that. It might. Because yeah, uh, Jupiter seems to be taking its time in places, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, and Saturn too. Yeah, this is and Neptune and this Uranus. Is that moves slowly, isn't it? <laughs> it seems. <laughs> it's very or small increments. Stop. You know, there could be small increments, and it appears yeah. to stop. I don't know. Or but it could be it is, that it broke. You know, whatever it is, you know, the Kingdom of Persia. It probably refers to the Middle East, or Persia could be a part yes. of the sky. You know, it could be um, one of the constellations even that it's mentioned in here. A bit more to think about there, isn't it? Yeah, because what we think things are called may not be what they were referring to at all. Look at Israel. Yeah, I think the constellation is one. You know, that could be something that stays in a certain constellation called Persia at the time. 
you know that name could change depending on the the culture. Well, what about the constellation Perseus? Isn't yeah, there exactly, one yeah. Andromeda and Perseus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that could be relating to a luminary that's in Perseus or Andromeda for 21 days. So whatever it is, it seems to take 21 days to cross this kingdom. So that's got to be a luminary crossing part of the heavens and it's in a certain location. You know, that could be one part of the zodiac even. It could be in, yeah. say, say it could be in, say, Scorpio for 21 days or, you know, pick, pick a, pick one of the zodiacs. Yes, yeah. any one yeah. luminary <laughs> in lo a location for three weeks. <laughs> and then it's moved on to somewhere else, it seems. Yeah, it's interesting, though. It is very interesting. And the only thing I can really say is Ezekiel, poor guy, he was traumatized by these things because he talks about them over and over and over. Um, as for the likeness of the faces, each had a human face. The four had the face of a lion on the right side. The four had the face of an ox on the left side. And the four had the face of an eagle. So this is something a little different because the last ones we talked about, each one had a face. These have all four faces on four sides. Yeah, that could be another model, wouldn't it? It is, and it's... It's like one's it, got the four, all the four faces. Yeah, it needs to probably turn and take different directions to uh, project what it's projecting. You know, whereas the other ones are simply facing one way and moving along. Or it's a better description of the same thing. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Uh, you know, the way I the first one was described, one. I thought, well... It seems that all, like, each one of them has got four faces. However, yeah, what I did read further in is that there are different sets of these things because it actually goes into how some of them only have one face and some of them have four faces. It yeah. says that. I can't remember where because this stuff has really got my mind <sighs> turning and, and, and confused at times, but I, I think I have a, a decent understanding um, because of what it's describing and what we're doing. Even so, though, it, it, even with an understanding, it still gets you because we haven't seen this stuff as well as they have. We have light pollution. We have pollutions that make us not be able to see what's going on. Plus, we haven't had the tour in the underworld like uh, a lot of them seem to be getting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And maybe it wasn't all covered up then, you know. Definitely not, you know. So go back to the go back to scriptures and sacred geometry again, it's there in your face everywhere you look now. Exactly. They could see it. We have had many things that have covered this stuff up or it was just too powerful and it was pushed down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> these are the bits they don't want you to see and understand. Exactly. Um, Kings, again, goes back to the arks. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant to the... <clears throat> excuse me, let me start over. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. Um, yeah, he put the cherubim... Go on, Sorry. He put the cherubim in the innermost part of the house, and the wings of the cherubim were spread out so that a wing of one touched the one wall, and the wing of the other cherubim touched the other wall. Their other wings touched each other in the middle of the house. At the well, going to the first one, uh, the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord in the place of the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place underneath the wings of the cherubim. So it tells me they were taking a piece of technology to the underneath the wings of the cherubim. Uh, what they're going to put in there, what they described in that scripture as hot coals, I'm going to be covering more in the next presentation, so I'll leave that one at that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the second part, you put the part out. Yeah, so the, you know, the big wings spread out. And that's so they can yeah. conduct. Their wings you know, have they, to they touch they the do, walls like as well as each other. Wings, don't they? they do like to mention these wings spreading out and 
being laden in gold, they're very important, the wings in all this scripture, you know, they're not just mentioning them because they're wings, they've got a role to play. Exactly, they're conducting this stuff. I mean, they have to be there, they have to touch so that the, it can pass on. Right, otherwise it just, the energy will shoot out in the... Out of the build, yeah. <laughs> And obviously, you know, the wings obviously move up and down. You know, they can. It will. It seems to elevate as they describe it. It lifts. The wings lift up. And like I said earlier, if things start interconnecting, switching on, and start to work. Once powered up, that is. <laughs> They've got to be powered up yeah. first. <laughs> um, Hebrews, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For there, thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Yeah, that, could, that could just mean, you know, people, random people, that. And, you know, yeah. might, it, I think what it might mean is you might actually meet some nice people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. It's hard to tell who's describing that, you know. Or, right. or why they would, isn't it, like that. Um, Are they blue from? Is that Ephesians? Ephesians, is that how you say that book? Uh, Ephesians, it looks like, yeah. Um, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That tells me they're not fighting against mankind, they're there to do a purpose, against the rulers, authorities, they might class as actual, you know, physics uh, and how, how, how this technology works. Cosmic powers of this present darkness, uh, we've got the power to get over this darkness by using this technology against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Mm. That could have been during the time of dark, you know, like you were saying, before the grid was... Yeah, yeah, the present darkness, so you know, this, this technology does give us our light show in the sky, basically. Yeah. Um, Corinthians. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Hmm, I believe this. So yeah, it tells you, know, it tells you there, there's people telling lies about what's how it works. Yeah, yeah. someone that says, well, it's basically warning, you know, People in this world are going to tell you lies and try and hide this, how it works. Definitely. And they do. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. They were right. <laughs> Matthew, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes <coughs> white as snow. I love the way they use the elements to describe <coughs> these things because that's what they are, leaves or, or elements. <laughs> <laughs> Their well, energy. Well, when you look at it, yeah, it looks like <laughs> you see the flash of lightning, uh, and the white that would look like white as snow, as opposed to your eyes. Yeah. Big white yes, flash happening. <laughs> yes, and if it was projecting something, it would be like lightning coming, you know. Or, or, or he was trying to describe perhaps the uh, cherubims on the above the mercy seat, you know, where, they, where the electricity lark across, and he seen it uh, and seen the appearance like lightning, and it looked white as snow. Well, you know, was he looking at the Ark of the Covenant when he's in what he's trying to describe here? Maybe possible. Matthew also says, uh, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Sounds like uh, one of the jowls, doesn't it? Let's take them, take them to the scrapyard. <laughs> Get them belted <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It kind of so it reminded me of, uh, depart from me, you curse, some, you know, something messed up or... Yeah, someone wasn't happy again, were they? Eternal yeah. Fire. Yeah, there's always a fire burning in hell. Yeah, it seems to be 
melting and smelting and casting and pouring. And prepared is definitely, um, I mean, it's prepared. You have to take something and make it into what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to do this. Yeah. So whatever. You have to melt things down to recast them into something else. <laughs> right, and that is also the words that you're thrown into the fire. Now, but now while, the, while the devil's on screen, one remember Satan was cast into the abyss. I'll mention that part yes. now. Uh -huh. uh, what it probably really means is Satan was cast in the abyss. Now, yes. when you think of cast, <laughs> people think something tossed away somewhere. No, what we're probably talking about is cast as in metal pouring, cast in metals. Because when you go back to the descriptions <coughs> of cherubims, you, you uh, start to see the ca there's bronze, there's gold, you know, the cast in metals. This is metal technology, metal beings or metal machines that they're creating. This is this is what's being cast. Yeah, and the eternal fire—that's where everything is prepared. It's where it's all being cast. We're not, it's not being thrown there for punishment. I agree. <laughs> Maybe it broke. Yeah, something went wrong. And, <laughs> nope, scrap that one. Bring another. <laughs> um, Ezekiel. Oops. Ezekiel just has a lot to say. Ezekiel has some really really good descriptions. <laughs> <coughs> you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Sardius, topaz, and diamond. Beryl, onyx, and jasper. Sapphire of emerald and carbuncle. And crafted into gold were your settings and your engravings. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. Ooh, that's lovely. That yeah. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. The settings were in gold. <laughs> yeah, engravings, the day you were created, they were prepared. So yeah, there was stones and things put, put aside ready for, the, for it being created and put together basically. A piece of the piece of the manufacturing process right before your very eyes, right there. It is. It, the day you were created, they were prepared. So they had all the stuff ready to its covering. I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, what, what else could it mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, no. uh, yeah, he took uh, great care and, you know, to do engravings, set stones inside them. Yeah, he's making them look really spectacular. Yeah, very pretty. Um, Ezekiel again, and their whole body, their rims, and their spokes, their wings, and the wheels were full of eyes all around. The wheels that had the four, wait, the wheels that had the four of them had. It is hard to read this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, you know, the rims and the spokes, uh, there's some wheels right there. You know, this is wheels on a vehicle again. Uh -huh. Wings and the wheels were full of eyes all around the wheels. Yeah, when you're looking at metal work, it, especially gold, because we've seen this gold manufactured on the wings, it is going to reflect what's in the room around it. So this is maybe what they were describing as eyes. You know, you, you're going to see a lot of reflections off this highly polished, shiny metal. And that's what I was yeah. describing there. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Um, Ezekiel, he said to the man clothed in linen, Go in among the whirling wheels underneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And he went in before my eyes. Whirling wheels underneath the cherubim. Now, what could be whirling? <laughs> you know, you're looking at an accelerator <laughs> again, aren't you? Yes. And the burning coals, yeah, oh, things uh, will get hot. It's been manufactured by this, by this process. You know, it's yeah. th this process does harvest elements. So we could be looking at well, the hands of some of these gathered elements that are just appearing from nowhere. <laughs> the alchemy of the machine. Burning coal can run a lot of machines might not only be producing it, but it could be actually being used to help keep these things going, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
it could be related mm -hmm. to the technology that actually powers them. Yeah. Uh, people will hear more of that in the next one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Ezekiel, uh, their wings touched one another. Each one of them went straight forward without turning as they went. Yeah, it went straight forward without turning as they went. That's uh, that sounds like it's setting off on its one of its paths, doesn't it? You know, yes. going, to go, going to go from the east to the west. It's setting out on its path, and this person Ezekiel witnessed it. So you see, um. clearly seen a, seen a cherubim setting off and going somewhere, and it didn't turn as he watched it. Right. It was a straight path. Um, Psalms again, it may be a repeat. He rode on the cherubim and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. <laughs> nice description. Yeah, that's <laughs> someone riding on the back of a cherubim, and it looks like they're flying, but you know, they're, again, they're on some kind of vehicle or going above. They're not touching the ground with their feet, in other words. They're on something, as described, something with wheels and spokes that moves and turn sometimes and not others <laughs> so you've drawn someone exactly. rode on the back of it on this on the wings of the wind well the wings would be the angel's wings the cherubim's wings and the accelerators are generating the wind the wings of the wind yeah very nice wording um, so the last two that i have here are kings again he overlaid the cherubim with gold and it also says, the other cherubim also measured ten cubits. Both cherubim had the same measure and the same form. Yeah, ask yourself people, what is the overlaying of gold? A cherubim, yeah. That cherubim will have overlaid with gold so it will have an eternal lasting uh, use for its for this particular role, this, this uh, particular cherubim's performing. You know, you, you want them to last, you're going to have to coat them in gold. That's what that's telling me. Yeah. Um, now we're going to shift. We're going to shift over to Enoch. So, <coughs> now again, this is not in any particular order. I went through and I picked out things that I thought were very interesting as far as describing some of the things that we are doing. But I encourage everyone to read it. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and we'll listen to it, but reading it, you know, for me, when I read the text, I can contemplate it more. Does that make sense? You can relate to it now, can't you? Exactly. That's exactly what it comes down to relating to all this to something you can visually, you know, you can visually see, basically, you know. Now we're looking at the model and concept we're playing with. We can see what it's telling us. Definitely. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just oh, amazing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and I was never a, a scripture. I, I'm not going to say I wasn't spiritual because I'm a very spiritual person, but I was never into Bibles or scriptures or anything like that either um, so this was quite a shock to me I mean when I read it you you know my reaction I was like oh my god literally like, yeah, yeah, it just, just slaps in the face doesn't it this yeah. is what it's talking about now you can see the construct <laughs> it does yeah. yeah that's exactly that to me but wow this makes perfect sense now yeah it does um, so Enoch, uh, great fear and trembling shall seize them, even to the ends of the earth. The lofty mountains shall be troubled, and the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. The earth shall be emerged, and all things which are in it will perish, while judgment shall come upon all, even all of the righteous. Ooh, definitely your department on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> Volcanoes? you know, huh? It looks like it's this what I've learned, creation, doesn't it? Yes, because what I've learned recently, and we'll go into this a bit more, but um, some mountains <laughs> trembling, which I would consider being troubled, can lead to depression of other hills. 
So if a volcano explodes, the hills can actually sink quite a distance away. And, and that would be the creation. It's, it's pulling it out of one area and putting it out into another. Another way could that be uh, technology switching on, causing the mountains to tremble. And you know, you, with trembling, you get quakes and things like that happen. And some some are pushed up and some are lower, don't they? Yeah. Trouble the yeah. exalted hills depress. So some are, some are uh, elevating and some are depressing, basically. So yeah, it's it's the uh, the world at work, isn't it? <laughs> Doing what it does. Yes. Um. This next one is quoted by Jude, so Enoch is quoting Jude, which to me it kind of sounds like maybe when everything had to be destroyed and the grid had to be put up, or the grid was just being put up, but anyway, behold, he comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon them and destroy the wicked and reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and ungodly have done and committed against him. <coughs> 10,000 of his saints, you know, you got to think of a saint with his halo. Again, we're talking halos, and again, we're talking a cherubim projecting one. So, yeah, it tells me there's thousands and thousands, which makes sense. You know, the 144,000 described in scripture, I think, probably possibly relates to these. Yeah. <coughs> well, they describe well, not, 10 thousands. Not possibly, definitely. <laughs> the 10 thousands are the angel, his saints, those are the angels, those are the cherubims. It's, it's said in other um, texts, that's exactly what it is. He's bringing his angels, <laughs> which are the halos, which are the cherubim. <laughs> and as we've showed in other work, one, well, you know, we, we had the 12,000 in each part sign of the zodiac creating the 144,000. Yes. Yeah. Um, so then... They know that the heavenly luminaries cannot change their paths, that each rise and set regularly, every one at its proper period, without transgressing the commandments which they have received. They behold the earth and understand what is there transacted from the beginning to the end of it. They see that every work of God is invariable in the period of its appearance. They behold the summer and winter, perceiving that the whole earth is full of water and that the cloud and dew and the rain refresh it, except fourteen trees which are not deciduous which wait from the old to the appearance of the new leaf for two or three winters. Nice, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Change not their paths. Very predictable. Yeah. Yeah. They're programmed. Sets regularly. Uh, it's proper period without changing the commands they've been received. Exactly. When yeah. you do a pr computer program, don't you enter your commands? to make it work the way you oh want yeah. it to work. And it should never okay. change unless something goes wrong and then someone's not happy and it's down to the scrapyard again. <laughs> <laughs> In eternal darkness even. Yeah, chained to a wall forever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't screw up. <laughs> you don't break. You don't want to be doing that. <laughs> and that's what the archangels are saying. Hey, hey, don't don't break. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. You, you will know, regret it. You You'll be to, melted. You don't want to go to the bad place, the abyss. <laughs> it's dark in there. They see, too, how the seas and rivers together complete their respective operations. And the women conceiving brought forth giants. Yeah, the seas and rivers together complete their respective operations. So, you know, it's telling you, yeah, the seas and the rivers have all got a mode of operation going on. You've got to think now, you know, the source of rivers, where is it coming from? It seems to be pumped back into the ground and it comes from a puddle in the middle of nowhere. And the next thing you've got a river that goes for miles. <laughs> Where's it coming from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a whole yeah. operation of 
process is going on down there to consider. Um, next, it goes a bit into the individuals. So, Azael taught men to make swords, knives, shields. Um, and the workmanship of bracelets, ornaments, the use of paint, beautifying the eyebrows, the use of stones. Um, Barkayal taught people how to observe the stars. Tamiel taught astro astronomy. And Azaradel taught the motion of the moon. Again, the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Aziel hand and foot, cast him in the darkness, and open an opening in the desert which is in Dudiel. Dudiel? <laughs> cast him there. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Uh, it tells me Azaziel's uh, malfunctioned. He's been cast down <laughs> into the, <laughs> into the pit with the others. <laughs> Up in the desert which is in Dudiel, cast him in there. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get recast or. Yep. Yeah, something's gone wrong there, hasn't it? Yeah, he messed up. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Malfunction or some kind went on there. Thrown upon him, hurled and pointed stones, covering him with darkness. There shall he remain forever, cover his face so that he may not see the light. And yeah, in the great yeah. day of judgment, <laughs> and in the great day of judgment, let him be cast in the fire. Oh, what a description again, you know, he's been put into storage, isn't he, in a dark room. <laughs> yeah, in a dark room until they need to recast him and make another one. Yeah, till the next one breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Spare parts room, isn't it, clearly? <sighs> Pretty much. Um, bind them for 70 generations underneath the earth even to the day of judgment and the consummation until the judgment the effect of which will last forever be completed then <coughs> shall they be taken away into the lowest depths of the fire in torments and in confinement shall they be shut up forever wow <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what happens that's if you the, break yeah, <laughs> the storage again wait a certain time or until that when is needed and Get it, <coughs> chuck it back in the fire and melt it down again, isn't it? Yeah. And shut um, up forever, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Bloody things, too noisy. Shut it down. Exactly. It's squeaking. <laughs> you hear that. <laughs> the oil gone. Um, immediately after this, shall he, together with them, burn and perish... They shall be bound until the consummation of many generations. They elevated me aloft to heaven. I proceeded until I arrived at a wall built with stones of crystal. A vibrating flame surrounded it, which began to strike me with terror. And drew mm. nigh to a... S <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> I thought it stopped. I was going to say, ooh, someone's been taken on the tour, eh? <laughs> yeah, this was Enoch's tour. Uh huh. And this, the striking him with terror, um, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with frequencies, so I'm just going to throw it out, out there. That, say, ghost hunters, there's a show, and they go in and try to debunk whether or not there's spirits lingering in the home. One of the first things they do is break out their EMF reader because if there's high EMF frequencies in a home, then it will actually cause the person to feel uh, paranoid and fear like someone's watching them. Um, those sensations are actually caused from the energy, which could be spirits. We're not getting into that right now, but the energy alone and the frequencies can cause people to tremble shake the hairs to stand up and them to feel very paranoid yeah vibrating for them surrounded it you know you could be talking about the electrical arcing off something here as well yes yeah and the greatness of that energy would 
make you feel <laughs> yeah and you're right yeah with the frequencies yeah yeah if they certain the frequencies humans are gonna i mean the guy didn't know what it was to start with by the sound of it so it's gonna scare him anyway <laughs> you know yeah. what the hell is that <laughs> what is this thing i'm looking at here what's that gonna do you're gonna yeah. put yourself a in vibrating shoes, plane. You? put yourself in their sandals and think what the hell is this <laughs> um and drew nigh to a spacious habitation built also with stones of crystal. Its walls too, as well as the pav pavement, were formed with stones of crystals. And crystal likewise was the ground. Its roof had the appearance of agitated stars and flashes of lightning. And among them were the cherubim of fire in a stormy sky. A flame burned all around its walls and its portal blazed with fire. When I entered into this dwelling, it was hot as fire and cold as ice. No trace of delight or life was there. Terror overwhelmed me, and a fearful shaking seized me. Nice description, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Enoch has very, nice, very good words. A very nice <laughs> ornate place where a very important piece of technology uh, basically is. And He's looking round at it, trying to describe what he's seeing. Yeah. Now the giants, who have been born of spirit and of flesh, shall be called upon the earth evil spirits, and on the earth shall be their habitation. Evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh, because they were created from above. From the holy watchers was their beginning and primary foundation. Evil spirits shall they be upon the earth, and the spirits of the wicked shall they be called. The habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon the earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits who are born on earth. The spirits of giants shall be like clouds, which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, contend, and bruise upon the earth. Well, you go first one. <laughs> hmm. Well, <laughs> some of the stuff, like I said, it still confuses me. Um, however, yeah, you've got to now, our land. You've got to really, you know, find. Is this someone describing an object, or is this someone describing how something works? There's a lot of ways you've got to look at what they're trying to tell you, haven't you? Yes. Well, our land has many, many giants in it. <clears throat> um. There was the war. Jimbo has a lot more information about this. He's studied a lot about these giants. But there was some kind of a war, definitely. And it might not have been a war like we think. You know, maybe these things decided to do their own thing and go against the programming, which we see where that gets you. So, <laughs> <coughs> as for the evil spirits... <coughs> I mean, we know that, well, go back to the giants. We know they're on our earth. They're in our earth. They're under our earth. They are our earth. We walk on them. Look at Mud Fossil. He supposedly has DNA that proves that there is DNA in our in our land, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Roger's done, done a lot of legwork on giants and titans, and he's still finding them today, and he's still presenting them to people. Fantastic research and work. Got to commend exactly. Roger. You know, he's... A man speaking from his heart, he really is. Yes, and he just shows us what he finds. Yeah, yeah, and that's all we're doing, people. You know, we're, we're revealing what our research tells us and what scriptures decode into us and put it out there for consideration, which is exactly what Roger and many others are doing. You've got to put it out there for consideration. Um, as for the evil, I still... Um, truly lean towards that it's the vibration that these things are putting off you know some have a, a good uh, uplifting vibration and some have a lower vibration when I think of evil I definitely think of the lower vibration well if you go against God or or break I mean well you'd have a pretty low vibration right if you break yeah oh yeah you know, but again, I you, you know I'm just taking it how I. If you I fail on the checksums, something's not right. <laughs> That's what it tells you, doesn't it? Yeah. 
there's a checksum for everything and, and if it's not functioning right then there's a problem yeah. <clears throat> they shall cause lamination no food shall they eat and they shall be thirsty they shall be concealed and shall not rise up against the son of man and against women for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction I mean, that's really self-explanatory. These giants slaughtered us. You know, some of them were this cannibalistic. This be relating to the angels again. Uh, they're not here to cause harm. They don't eat food. They're, they shall be thirsty. Mm. They are concealed and shall not rise up against the sons of men. So they're not attacking mm. us or women. They right, but they're coming forth the during the days. Slaughter days. and destruction. Mm. Yeah, well, this could be the grid going up. To it protect us. It could be. <laughs> Slaughter and destruction. <laughs> yeah, because that's what was probably going on. Yeah. When the giants were around, they were destroying everything. The yeah. grid goes up. Oh, yeah. You the know. grid goes up and it starts cutting them to pieces, basically. You cannot and walk protecting us. These, you cannot walk through these halos. These are the origins of lightning. So it's going to zap you. You go anywhere, yeah. anything big goes near those, they're going to get zapped. And it doesn't matter what size they are. Yeah, and they won't they won't rise up against us. You, you know, know, it makes it me wonder: is this a part of uh, the petrification process? Walking into one of those halos, mm. perhaps you know, would that cause instant <laughs> petrification? Because when you think when you, at, when you look at Roger's work, you know, you look at these rocks, and it looks like the oxygen's actually bubbled out of the rocks. It's overheated. Well, surely that that would suggest an electric shock. Your blood's basically boiling. It's bubbling out of its its, its uh, veins and things. You know, it very much could describe how the petrification of these titans and giants happened. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I beheld the receptacles of light and of thunder at the extremities of the place where it was the deepest. There was a bow of fire and arrows in their quiver, a sword of fire and every species of lightning. Every species of lightning? Who? What a description. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, that's telling you there's different yeah. types of electricity right there. Which we know there yep. is, you know, there's various types of electri electrical form going on. So <laughs> now it can be harnessed. <laughs> yeah, nice description. I agree. But we'll get into that next presentation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, then they elevated me to a babbling stream and to a fire in the west, which received all of the setting of the sun. I came to a river of fire which flowed like water and emptied itself into the great sea westwards. I saw every large river until I arri arrived at the great darkness. I went to where all of the flesh <coughs> migrate, and I beheld the mountains of gloom, which constitutes winter, and the place from which issues the water in every abyss. I also saw the mouths of all rivers in the world, and the mouths of the deep. I then surveyed, surveyed the receptacles of the, all the winds, perceiving that they are contributed to adorn the whole creation, and to preserve the foundation of the earth. Well, the first thoughts when it mentioned babbling stream made me think of politicians. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's been to Downing Street or somewhere in UK. <laughs> but no, a babbling stream and a fire in the west. Yeah, there is a big fire, great fire in the west. That's been described a lot, isn't it? This fire in the west. Yes. Receives the set yes. of the sun. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's got to be the west gate on our on our grid the gate in the west or the port in the west if you want to call them those and a river of fire yeah flowed like water yeah you're looking at lava there aren't you definitely lava empty <laughs> cell into the great sea westwards which is exactly what it's still doing to it today isn't it <laughs> yes every it large is. river where all the flesh migrates, eh? that's got to be like the migrating birds and species, things we place, they all go to there. 
It'd be a nice place, wouldn't it? Oh, beautiful, I bet. In the mouths of all the rivers of the world. Well, there you go. There's a nice source for all these rivers. Oh, would you talked about the source of rivers before? Yeah. Except and it because goes of all the winds. Yeah, we know it's generating the winds. Yeah, and we'll get into that a bit more coming up. I believe I have it in here. Yeah. There's different winds as well. Um, all right, these next ones I think I'm going to read in a bunch. I surveyed the stone which supports the corners of the earth. I also beheld the four winds which bear up the earth and the firmament of heaven. And I beheld the winds occupying the exalted sky, arising in the midst of heaven and earth and constituting the pillars of heaven. And I saw the winds which turn the sky, which cause the orb of the sun and all the stars to set and over the earth I saw the winds which support the clouds. I saw the path of the angels. I perceived at the extremity of the earth the firmament of the heaven above, and then I passed towards the south. What an amazing description again. <laughs> supports the corners of the earth. Yes. Uh, well, well, we the pillars. Can you leave it uh, lit up in blue so I can go through it? Slowly. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> Jumping yep. ahead there, I'll see um, you. <laughs> uh, right yeah, here. Let's break, that <laughs> let's break this down a bit further. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the stone Start on the first the corners one. of the earth. You know, it's telling you there there's some structure in the, in the corners of the realm somewhere. Well, and it only, it's, it's singular, so that was kind of grabbed me. I surveyed the stone which supports the corner of the earth. Or he's only, or he's only been to one corner and, and suggests that the other corners are going to be the same. Yeah, or it's just one type of stone that was used. Yeah, 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 this, the type of stone used, yeah, that would uh, do it. The four winds which bear up the earth and the firming up of heaven. The four winds, uh, they've been referenced in the north, south, east and west before. Yes bear up the earth and bear up that's a good word you know bear up it's coming from below yeah. <laughs> from the firmament of heaven so it's telling you you know this firmament you know our research doesn't touch on the firmament yet but it's telling you there's some kind of a structure isn't it definitely you know, our, our researcher can only go as high as the halos we can't see what's beyond those but this firmament just keeps popping up doesn't it so it's suggesting there's something more to see definitely I beheld the winds occupying the exalted sky. Yeah, he's going to notice the winds in certain areas, plotable on maps. You know, you can go to a map and there's certain tornadoes there 24 7, they never move. <laughs> People <laughs> get to question that, surely, what the hell is causing that tornado to sit there and not move? <laughs> exactly. And there's probably still those kind of things, and we're not allowed to go there and see them. Yeah. Yeah, right I don't know that for sure, but I would imagine it's still there. You know, something's holding yeah, it all it's up. Still still. Running, so nothing's changed. <laughs> it still works. So, arising in the midst of heaven and earth and constituting the pillars of heaven. In the middle of heaven and earth, you know, arising from <laughs> basically the land. <laughs> yeah. And number six is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Get a bit noisy for me now to talk. <laughs> um, I saw the winds which turned the sky, which caused the orb of the sun and all the stars to set. And over the earth, I saw the winds which supported the clouds. I mean, these are all very self-descriptive, honestly. The winds are turning the, the whatever's in the sky, which, <coughs> um, the clouds, right? Yeah, the winds, the, about the, the winds are moving the clouds around. Mm -hmm. Your jet stream, that's, you know, it's clearly coming from all this technology. The orb of the sun and all yeah. the stars to set, yeah. Over the earth, so the winds which support the clouds, yeah, the winds that are supporting them in the sky, you know, the winds 
again you can look at tornadoes and above them there's, you know there's the clouds <laughs> they generated somewhere aren't they yeah um, I saw the path of the angels I perceived at the extremities of the earth the firmament of heaven above it and then I passed towards the south yeah very nice so that was someone going on a, a tour Enoch being taken on part well, of the I tour think, I think he may have been west at that point right because he talked about how the sun sets in the west so. yeah yeah he was definitely in the west and the extremity in the west he was taken to where obviously there's a piece of the firmament and above it and then passed on towards the south so yeah he's got to the end of the west and too and now he looks like he's heading south so let's go south <laughs> yep let's go <laughs> all right um again i just picked out pieces but some of it is in chunks and some of it just didn't grab me i guess um where burnt both day and night six mountains formed of glorious stones three towards the east and three towards the south those which were towards the east were of <coughs> variegated stone one of which was margaret and another of antony those towards the south were of red stone in the middle one reached to the heaven like the throne of god a throne composed of alabaster <coughs> the top of which was sapphire i saw too a blazing fire hanging over one of the mountains and there i saw a place on the other side of an extended territory where the waters were collected interesting huh yes <laughs> so in the south there's a mountain that reaches possibly to the firmament if it's still there well going back to series his research uh, he told me the highest mountain in the world is in antarctica it's not everest he said he's uh, <laughs> managed to get the data to, to, to locate one in the south antarctic somewhere that's the highest in the world and we're never going to see it and there clearly is something to see at the top of it when going by this. Definitely something to see at the top of it. <laughs> um, so then it, on the other side of it, there's extended territory where the waters are collected. I find that very interesting. Wow, yeah, that's, that's looking now beyond our realm when you think about that extended territory. Or does it mean... What we really see on our, you know, when you, when you look at our map, look at the size of Antarctica, that is an extended territory. It is, it is, and if it's, if it is frozen, even parts of it, bits of it, most of it. Mm. Water's obviously collected there, otherwise it wouldn't freeze. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if it's not freezing, yeah, it obviously it tells you there's some heat there. <laughs> As Admiral Burke right. described, didn't he describe it? Sounded like a tropical paradise, the place he was describing. Exactly, and that could be beyond what we see. We see the ice, but we don't see very far into it. <laughs> you know? well, it's on our map, it's the greatest landmass that you can see, isn't it? Look exactly. It on our map, it is huge. They portray it as all ice. It can't be all ice. I'm no. sorry, it can't. No, there's things beyond there they don't want us to see, clearly. The ice could simply be the container for the waters to be collected. It doesn't mean our whole world, but our world is water, but still. Uh, it yeah, it's po possibly got sides, you know, elevated sides. The, the Antarctic is a very ele elevated place compared to the rest of the world. This is what series yeah. data shows. Yeah. We discussed that, I think, in one of the previous videos, the elevation there. Yeah. Um, I likewise beheld terrestrial fountains deep in the fiery columns of heaven and in the columns of heaven I beheld fires which descended without number but neither on high nor into the deep over these fountains also I perceived a place which had neither the firmament of heaven above nor the solid ground underneath of it neither was there water above it nor anything on wing but the spot was desolate very interesting deep in the fiery columns of heaven i think yeah what he's trying to describe here it, it sounds like comets or something doesn't it 
problems are that it'd be all fires which descend and go up number near high and or into the deep. It sounds like there's comets or electrical arcing or something going on there. Is this the kind of fountain he's describing? Some electrical arcing going on? Could be. Sure. Hmm. And probably, <laughs> I mean, we definitely need to look more into this stuff, but putting it out there to me is a very good idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's going to be considered, you know, and the same again, the solid ground beneath it, and neither was the water. So it's kind of describing what you would call a void, you know, it sounds like there's a, a yeah. void of. Unless it was too dark to see anything, I'm not sure. But yeah, the <laughs> spot was definitely desolate. <laughs> well, <laughs> it is. There, you know, you're saying there, there's nothing there. And when you look at Antarctica, like the emperor penguins, that's probably all that lives there. But, <laughs> but, yeah, big but. <laughs> but if there's a, a tropical paradise beyond there, then there's going to be all kinds of creatures living there, surely. There'd have to be, right. Because that's where life is sustainable. Um, but it goes a little more into it. So this is the place where, and there I beheld the seven stars, like great blazing mountains, and like spirits entreating me. And then the angel said, this place, until the consummation of heaven and earth, will be the prison of the stars and the host of heaven. Wow. Is that tell you <laughs> right there? Seven stars, our seven major luminaries, has been held in a location until the heaven and earth is prepared for them to st start being projected into. The host of heaven, yeah. our seven major luminaries, the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, there before they were even projected into the heavens. Part of the creation, guys. <laughs> and this next one... Um, I didn't know what the term rollover meant, so I actually um, asked someone that, yeah, that uh, works with metal. Fire, which well, you metal. you roll you roll metal when you're forging it. You roll it to make it stronger. So let's read that now, knowing that when you roll metal, you're making it stronger, more durable when you're forging it. The stars which roll over fire are those which transgressed the commandment of God before their time arrived, for they came not in the proper season. Therefore he was offended with them and bound them until the period of the consummation of their crimes in the secret year. Well, that right there tells you something went wrong with these stars, and it looks like whatever they were created from, or the projector, I think that's actually describing the projector now. The, the part <laughs> where it would be project from, and something was wrong. They didn't come out when commanded to, before, you know, or they come out before the time. Something malfunctioned and didn't come out in the proper season. Therefore, he was offended with them and bound them until the period of the consummation of their crimes in the secret year. So yeah, he's uh, placed them somewhere because something didn't quite go right with them. Yeah. <laughs> don't break. <laughs> That's all I can say. Don't. Yeah, don't don't break. Don't. That one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be going there. Um, then I made a circuit to a place which nothing was completed. There too I beheld seven stars of heaven bound in together like a great mountain and a, like a blazing fire. I exclaimed, for what species of crimes have they been bound and why have they been removed to this place? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me and who conducted me, answered, Enoch, Wherefore dost thou ask, wherefore reason within thyself, and anxiously inquire? These are those of the stars which have tra transgressed the commandment of the Most High God, and are here bound until the infinite number of days their crimes be completed. <laughs> Very nice. So he's come across a place <laughs> where they kind of stored you again. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Would you yes. like to read through that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Enoch's thinking, what are these lot done wrong? Why are they here? You know, he's, uh, he's in his mind, he's querying what he's looking at. Why are these here? And he's, he's kind of anxious, and, and you can tell by what the uh, one of the all the angels has answered him. So it, it seems these these technologies can communicate to you. Or this is someone that's authorized, say, to communicate between humans and cherubims. Uh, you know, 
You can ask yes. yourself, who is this he's speaking to? <laughs> Wherefore does thou ask, you know? It, you know, this, this person or machine is at Creedy in Enoch's line of thought. So why does this trouble you kind of thing? This is this is how it works, you know? This is how it works, mate. What's wrong with you? <laughs> they, you know, they're not, they're not required yet, so they're here, they will stay until needed. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so, so it's a location in the underworld he was taken to and these are stored there for a particular uh, period of time it seems yeah and it says I made the circuit to a place which nothing was completed so it wasn't done it wasn't, it wasn't completed that's why they were waiting yeah waiting for their moment Yeah, their, their uh, trigger their cue to start and go and do what they do yeah. Like it says, with um, the infinite number of the days of their crimes to be completed, you know, it's just a countdown. You're looking at a countdown timer until they're supposed to do something again. Exactly. And the word, the word play, crimes, you know, we know it to be something terrible nowadays, but the original meeting may not have been terrible. No, crimes could just, just be just the, the things you've done, the thing, you know. Yeah. Your crimes are the things you do, the the acts you. Yeah, uh, I mean, in it, you you can look at Enoch's mind, and he's just trying to query everything he's been shown, but it's beyond his comprehension. It seems of exactly what it is he's been shown. What you know, what he's yeah. finding alarming and scary is quite a normal and natural process going on. It's just a, a human reaction to what they're looking at. You know, this this technology and the scale of it it drops men to the knees and you can see why because they cannot comprehend what they're looking at yeah it would be hard to it's hard to articulate this anyway it really is isn't imagine. It? <laughs> it's a little you know? bit easier for us because we can understand technology we're brought up with it and once you start seeing it and how it works and relate it to what's going on in the underworld it's pretty easy to put together I agree um, from thence I, af I afterwards passed on to another terrific place. Enoch, why art thou al alarmed and amazed at this terrific place, at the sight of this place of suffering? This, he said, is the prison of the angels, and here they are kept forever. From thence I proceeded to another spot where I saw in the west a great and lofty mountain, a strong rock, and four delightful places. Yeah, internally. Go Hold ahead. On. Yeah, I was just going to mention about the, uh, you know, what is it that again? The prison of the angels, and here they are kept forever. It's, you know, yeah. what they call in the prison really is the underworld. This is where they work and operate. They, they're kept there forever because this is where they pre they're, they're designed to work from. It's, you know, it's their work environment basically, what you're looking at. Yeah. Whatever guys, they're still down there. They're still doing what they were intended to do. Amazing. Yes, it? it says forever. It says until the consummation of earth and heaven, and that has not happened. They are still there. They're still there. We just don't know where to look. And even if we did, could we even get down there? You know. And then if we got down there, would we want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's every human's right to go and see this amazing place isn't it really you know imagine a school trip down there you know take a little roller coaster ride down below for a few miles and come back up oh the, the sights you would wow. see That's i can guarantee you no no one would quit school we wouldn't have this problem with people not wanting to be in school if things Ooh, like that happen education with this <laughs> on board yeah what you would learn at school <laughs> yeah you'd exactly. pay, i think you'd pay a bit more attention yeah you would definitely live your life differently as well yeah, you would. You would because you know this brings scripture. To, this brings scriptures to life. It does. Yeah. Um, eternally, is. internally, it was deep, spacious, and very smooth, as smooth as if it had been rolled over, and it was both deep and dark to behold. Again, the rolled over, smoothing it out, and it's making it stronger. Manufactured. Yeah. It's that's what you do very, when you forge. Very things. large, spacious and manufactured is what he's describing, isn't he? Yes. 
um, we'll finish it up because this is all I have rest of for the rest of Enoch. Um, then Raphael, one of the holy angels who were with me, answered and said, These are the delightful places where the spirits, the souls of the dead, will be collected. For them they were formed, and here will be collected all of the souls of the sons of men. Three separations have been made between the spirits of the dead, and thus have the spirits of the righteous been separated, namely by a chasm, by water, and by light above. Very interesting. <laughs> It is very interesting. Delightful places for sure, I'm bet they're very delightful. Spirits and the souls of the dead will be collected. Now, you know, is this referring to the souls of humans, or does it refer to the, what cost, you know, what could be the souls of technology being shut and down? <laughs> yeah, will be collected. Well, I'm not sure about that part, but it does refer to the sons of men, which is us. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know, but that's that's also just probably trying to tell us, like, okay, the technology's below, then we have the separation for the humans, and then we have the uh, projections up in the sky, the light above. Yeah. But if you looked at it like chasm, I'm not sure what that word is, I'll have to look it up, but we do have earth, we have water, and we have light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chasm's like an abyss, deep, uh, a deep, isn't it? Yeah. kind of idea it could be that the deep and the abyss has been um, you know discovered I guess so to speak you know there's places that are very deep on earth full of water but then when they go down so low it's been described as there's another lake below the lake yeah the well, waters are more dense so they separate but why are they more dense? What's the, the sub, souls you know? of the dead as well will be collected, you know, if uh, now you know there's a creator, you know, your soul, will you be judged one day on what you've been doing in this world? <laughs> people, these people behind hiding this really need to start thinking about this. It's true. And not only that, but the whole world in general. If we're going to be judged on the things that we've done in this world, then the world needs to get a grip. They need to rethink their actions and how they treat people. We don't treat people like garbage, which is what the world does. Everyone is out for themselves, and that's not what the way it was supposed to be. No, but not that's right. not really what this is about. We're more talking about the construct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all, we all have to seek our own souls and figure out who we want to be, how do we want to portray it, and how do we want to be remembered when we leave this world. That's on us, not... That's, not a that's exactly all you've got left, how you want to be remembered. Exactly. And then, based on that, we can grow as a group. But until we fix ourselves individually, we can't grow as a group. Well, we are growing as a group, but we suck. Like, <laughs> we are horrible. <laughs> we are horrible. We're a primitive species. <laughs> yes. Yes. At times. If, if you don't agree with me, I'll kill you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not, that's not, yeah, who I want to be. That's not who I want to be. Yeah. And that's all I can do. Well, I think it was a fantastic uh, run through there. Do you? I thought it was, yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that was awesome. You, this is how you decode scripture. <laughs> You've got to look at it and what's it really telling you people? You know? Question it. Look into it. Read it. And but do factor in technology in a construct because clearly this is what it's all telling you. Exactly. Now I can't wait for you to put it together. <laughs> <laughs>